Hello and welcome back to Josh Jekyll Detailing. On today's video, you're going to be seeing me polish this 2007 F350 crew cab long box. Now, this truck has been abused. It's full of scratches. The paint's oxidized. The headlights are tarnished. They're yellow and super faded. And basically, we're just going to see how far, how good we can get this vehicle. Now, the conditions aren't great. I'm going to be doing this outside. It's the winter time in Canada right now. So, end of winter. So, the temperature is about negative 2 Celsius to plus six celsius it gets pretty cold and i had to take a break for a few days because a snowstorm rolled in and the temperature was like minus two to minus ten and it really made this video take a lot longer than it should have it was kind of annoying so if you're interested in seeing this old farm truck getting polished just how shiny you can get make sure you stick around and watch this video A little bit of information on this vehicle. This vehicle has been basically just a farm truck beater, just used for hauling garbage to the dump and hauling around all kinds of, you know, yard waste and debris and stuff like that. And this truck has basically only been washed six times in the last eight years. So it's extremely dirty. There's rust on the vehicle, but I'm going to be polishing it up just for some a little bit of practice and a little bit of fun just to see where it can go. How well you can polish something in the winter, does the cold affect it? Obviously the cold does affect it a little bit. You know, you can't polish anything if it's, you know, freezing out, but... So I start this polish out just as I would any other vehicle. I do a full exterior wash, I foam the vehicle down, I do a hand wash, I clean all the cracks and crevices, and I also do uh, paint decontamination. I try and pull out any contaminants in the paint, like overspray, tar, bugs, and iron particles. And I also wash the rims and tires thoroughly. I was thinking about polishing up the rims on this vehicle, but I think I'll do that in another video because this video took quite a long time. And if you're wondering how long it took me to wash this truck, I probably spent about 16 to 24 hours on this truck. I'm not exactly sure because all the polishing was split up between so many different days because of the weather. And some days it was just too cold. I had to shut it down, come back another day when it warmed up. At one point I was waiting, you know, two to three days for the weather to warm up. The cold snap rolled in and I couldn't do anything. Even though this vehicle hasn't been washed very much in the last eight years, it's almost never been driven. It only gets driven to the dump, you know. This vehicle only gets driven like maybe six times a year at most. So there there was that benefit to it, which was pretty awesome. So I used an iron remover here on this truck. It's probably gonna be one of the last times I ever use an iron remover. I really don't like the smell of iron remover. It smells like sewage, sulfur, that sort of thing and I'm just not willing to work with it. And I don't really see the benefits of it. Now, a lot of people probably think that iron removers are great products and that's fine. I'd rather just use a clay bar. The clay bar is so much better than an iron remover. And in this video here, instead of using a clay bar, I'm using clay mitt just to try it out. It's a uh, Adams clay mitt. And I didn't really like it because it felt like it wasn't pulling anything off of the paint compared to a clay bar. Clay bars are really good, especially if you get a good one, like the Meguiar's clay bar. It pulls absolutely everything off the paint. It's just amazing. And the clay mitt that I was using, it felt like it wasn't pulling anything off. I'm gonna have to use it on a few vehicles. I also ended up polishing all of the chrome on this truck. I didn't use any type of metal polish. I just used a dual action with a microfiber cutting pad and a cutting compound, Meguiar's cutting compound. That's it. That's all that I used to polish the chrome on this truck. It turned out pretty great. The chrome is kind of damaged, so there's only so far you can take it. I 
I also did a headlight restoration on this truck. The headlights were pretty bad. They were, um, you know, tarnished yellow and full of scratches. And it took me a little bit to figure out how to get these headlights looking good again. Basically the scratches on them were really deep. I had to go a lot more aggressive with the wet sanding. And also when Ford made this truck, they put some kind of protectant on the headlights that was very strong. You know, they sprayed on some type of clear coat on there and the sandpaper basically wasn't even doing anything to this clear coat that was sprayed on the headlights, it wouldn't even sand it. So it took a lot of elbow work and a coarse cigarette sandpaper. I think I went down to about 600, maybe 400 even, to deal with those headlights and they came out looking great. Yeah, there's definitely some fresh snow here and it was cold. You can polish paint in the cold, it works fine, as long as it's not, you know, anything colder than minus two Celsius or 30 Fahrenheit. At that point, you know, it's getting pretty difficult. That is the temperature that I was polishing at, was about minus two, that was the coldest. And it was kind of annoying because my microfibers were freezing, but the panels were kind of warm. If the panels are in the sun, the panels are gonna be hot and the rotary or dual action or whatever is gonna heat up the panel enough so that you can still polish it. But it's cold and you're not gonna be happy polishing in that temperature I wasn't but it wasn't that big of a deal neither just put on some layers and you'll be fine so the paint on this truck it's oxidized and it's full of scratches it took a little bit to figure out how to get this truck polished correctly uh, sometimes you got to play around with it a little bit you know each paint is different and whatever you're trying to remove is different it's a little bit of a you know it's a little bit of a trial and error type of situation so i polished this part of the truck here and i wasn't happy with the way that it came out so i came back and repolished it basically i did cutting compound with the wool pad and then i polished it with a foam polishing pad and it didn't look very great at all i was pretty disappointed with the way that it looked so it got cold and i had to shut it down so i went inside and thought about it for a while and then came back the next day and tried a different technique. So this truck it needed more polishing. So what I did was I used a cutting compound with the wool pad and then I switched to a polishing product with the wool pad and then I finished with another polishing product with the foam pad and that made it come out really good. So what was going on was you know, the paint is heavily oxidized and scratched. When I was polishing this truck here, not very much was happening with the cutting compound. And as I was using the cutting compound and the polish, I noticed that the color of the compound would change quite dramatically. It went from, you know, it's white color to a dark gray paste. And basically that was just all of the dirt coming out of the clear coat. And it, it took a little bit longer for the actual paint to shine because I had to cut this dirt out of the top layer of the clear coat out many times before it came out good and in the end it, it ended up turning out pretty great so here i am polishing the uh, truck bed here it's a long box truck bed and it took me about an hour to polish this one panel out that's to do a three step on it cutting compound with the wool polish with the wool and then polish with the foam pad it took me about an hour to do that just on the truck bed alone three steps So here I'll show you, I'll slow the uh, footage down to normal speed with the rotary here. Oh, and this hood, it took me a long time to do the hood because I really wanted the hood to turn out good because, you know, everyone likes the hood to be super shiny and 
it's arguably one of the most important parts of the paint. You know, it's all important, but everybody looks at the hood all the time. So it took me about two hours, I think, to do this hood. It was difficult too, because it was all on ladder and I was going super slow, trying to make this look super good, really good. Basically, I'm going normal speed here just to show you how I actually do with the rotary, that I've got the rotary flat here, not up on edge. Having the rotary flat on the paint is really important. It's hard to do that. Basically, your polish and all that needs to be just right to get your rotary flat or else you know your rotary is not going to react well it's going to be skipping and jumping all over the place or you're going to end up putting the rotary up on edge to make it work now sometimes you going up on edge isn't a problem but you definitely don't want to be going up on edge with the rotary all the time you want to have it flat as much as possible but some areas you have to have it up on edge like curves or edges that's totally fine and just try not to have the rotary up on edge because you're going to leave uh, holograms in the paint if you have the rotary up on edge the entire time you're polishing you're going to end up with holograms in the paint at the very end so putting it flat removes the holograms and going nice and slow removes the holograms and not pressing too hard as well and if you want to have your rotary nice and flat on the paint surface i like to have my cutting compound or polish a little bit wetter so what i'll do is i'll put it whatever amount of compound i want on there like you know three to five drops and then i'll just spray water on there help to allow that wool pad to be flat against the paint surface and not skip all over the place. Now, it's always different depending on what type of paint you're working on. This was really old, oxidized, dirty paint, so it was really grabby and it needed to be a bit wetter. But if I were to come back and polish this truck again, since it's freshly polished and nice and smooth, it's not gonna be so grabby. I'm not gonna have to have the cutting compound so wet, but I do like it wet. You gotta be careful because it slings compound all over the place and it, you know, it can be tough to get off of trim and tire and that's kind of what I dealt with on this vehicle here. I didn't tape anything up. I was trying to practice and see how well I could polish this truck out without having to mask anything up because masking things takes a long time. So if you can polish a vehicle without doing that, you know, you'll save some time. But I had a really hard time. I basically couldn't do it. You know, I got compound all over the place as careful as I was and it was a little bit annoying to remove the compound out of the trim but I was able to. Uh, no problem with just a few products, you know. And basically what got it out for me was just Goo Gone and, you know, a little bit of elbow grease. Polishing the roof of this truck was a real pain because it's so high up. It took me a very long time and it was really awkward doing the roof of this truck the entire time. And it has a lot of angles in the roof of this truck that were so, sort of annoying to work with. It wasn't just a flat surface that was easy to polish. I had to get up on, put the rotary up on edge and get all in those cracks and curves and all that sort of stuff. So it was really annoying. This roof took a long time. I'm not sure how long it took exactly. Maybe, you know, an hour and a half or something like that. Super long. I know told your friend you're not okay and tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until i look away but i've known you too long it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really want to hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never felt this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away
As you can see here, there's some goo on the gas tank lid here. It's basically a tuck tape adhesive and it came out pretty well. I used a heat gun and some rubbing alcohol, 99% isopropanol to get rid of that. And it didn't take much effort at all. I just heated it up and rubbed in the iso and it came out well. And then I polished it up nice. And that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. Thank you for watching. It was a little bit of a how-to on, you know, how to polish uh, oxidized and trashed paint on an old farm truck. And if you could do a polish out in the cold near freezing. Yes, you can. And for me to polish this truck, it took me three steps. It took a cut and a double polish, and it came out pretty well. And thanks for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one. And I don't feel no shame, it's a mood you lack I go crazy, nah, but I ain't lazy Track after track, I work on this sh** daily Pass me the jack, right as fuel got me hazy About to unpack all these shoes I've been chasing I've got visions in my head Like memories after death To be a legend instead Of something you can forget I'm living up every breath I'd rather leave than be led I'll fill the seats as I spread With every word that I've said